We're going to France. And we it was the like, worst passage we, we have uh, ever had. It was. We have reached like two nuts, three nuts. Proud to be back in your homeland with your wine, your cheese, your baguettes. Since I tried the food, oh yeah. <laughs> Ah, you classic. And that everywhere you look is just a sailing boat. Oh, and we're flying our jib. Downwind sailing is all time. We hardly ever get to do this, so anything downwind is so good. Stay married, <laughs> buy a boat, sail west. We are never sailing east again. Decision made. We've all just decided that sailing east is shit. So, I don't care where we're going, but we're never going east ever again. Apart from St. Martin, 82 miles. So the thing that we've been doing since the beginning is basically sailing east which means we're going into the trade winds. Now the trade winds come always this way and we want to go directly into them. Now, on a power boat, that's fine. Put the motors on and straight away you can go. In a sailboat, it's totally different. Sailing directly into the wind is near on impossible, especially with a boat like a catamaran. Mono hulls have a little bit better angle on the breeze, but catamarans obviously have to pull off a little bit more. So what we have to do in order to try and make any ground up here is to tack at the best angle we can. So in order to go this direction, we have to tack down and up like this at angles the best we can reach. Now the best breeze we can do uh, on a stiff breeze is maybe 40 degrees off the wind. We've done 30, but 40 is about right. And that allows us to get from point A to point B, making a zigzag tacking pattern all the way up and that's how we reach our destination. We're going to France, but not mainland France. We're heading to uh, an island called Saint Martin. And the north side of it is France and the south side I think is Dutch. Um, and we're heading there now. It's uh, less than ideal conditions. It's about an 82, 84 mile journey direct, uh, but that's into the wind. It's not possible. It's blowing 15. The next three to four days are worse. Um, I guess the only thing we can uh, look forward to now at the moment is a nice 30 or 40 mile sail with the wind um, at a good angle, make some ground north, and then we're gonna tack back southeast straight into the wind. But uh, it's pretty much only, it's all we can do. Otherwise we sit here and wait again and again and again, but this, this weather doesn't let up, so. Hey Freya, how are you guys going over there? Almost ready for some anchor upage action. Upage, good terminology. Yeah, I think we just need to start the engine and pull the anchor and we are ready to go. Ooh. Roger that, I'm gonna warm my motors up and we'll be out of here. The last island of the BVI before we get offshore. And you know who island that is? That is Sir Richard Branson, the uh, self-made multi-billionaire entrepreneur. That is his island. Right here. About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. Progress was slow as we tacked through the night, but St. Martin was in sight. With only eight miles to go, it seemed like an eternity until we arrived. But finally, we reached the anchorage. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing to say. That's 
it. So I can't. <laughs> 20. Woo. So it's 26 hours and 44 minutes into the wind from oh. the BVI to St. Martin. And it we was like, the worst passage we have done. ever had. It was we well, averaged low speeds. We did a lot of tacking, so a lot of maneuvering up and down, trying to sail with the breeze through the night. And then the breeze was just all over the shop. It was changing. It was. We were planning to arrive at six o'clock this morning, and it's six o'clock p.m. Yeah, we we're like twelve. We're about ten hours longer than we had anticipated yeah. on our track, but we just couldn't sail what we thought we could. It was only eighty miles. Good shit. Cheers. No, that is the very, very last time we will need to head east through the Thorny Passage. The Thorny Path to Windward, which was shit house. With a population just over 29,000, the northern French side of Saint Martin remains a popular sailing destination for many cruisers. The peaceful coexistence between the two countries remains as one of the oldest active undisputed treaties on the planet. First thing to do when you arrive, make sure to get a delicious French fresh croissant. Found the good cheese already. Two meters from the door. All right, we're back in the land of the good times. We have got everything here. It's like being in France again, and the food is so cheap. We're literally picking up blocks of cheese, and they're costing us like a dollar or two, two euros. Okay, so before to go and explore, uh, we're gonna have a little bit of lunch. A picnic lunch on the dock. We just got ourselves an all-time baguette, and we're gonna fill it up with some stuff that we bought from home. So we have the mayonnaise, now a little bit of butter. <laughs> this is no good for our Seems. bodies. <laughs> so that's the taxi we were just in. And uh, we just came from the French side to the Dutch side. And now we're going to try, try and get to the world famous beach. You may have seen that the aeroplanes land on top of you. Um, and you can sort of get blown out from the jet stream, which is cool. It's uh, nice that uh, you can hop from country to country with no passport checks. It's just a, a really nice story that these guys have sort of agreed on. So basically what happened was um, they were arguing between the, the Dutch and the French and in the Middle Island, they, they said, well, let's meet in the middle and then uh, we'll split the island between the two of us. And the French had a bottle of wine and the Dutch had a bottle of uh, gin. And the reason that the French have more is because the gin affected the other guy more and that's why they have so much. So that's the little story that goes along with it. I think it's here. All right, we're here in the uh, St. Martin airport. <laughs> that was hectic. After a few days recovering from the long passage across from the BVI's, we explored both the south and north side of St. Martin. The weather lined up perfectly and we made our way to St. Bart's. It's blowing 18 knots. We're sitting on about 7 knots and this is why people go sailing. Because we're leaving St. Martin, we're heading uh, pretty much due south the reason people sail the Caribbean is because you have the perfect breeze every single time and you can fly. St. Bartholomew, commonly known as St. Bart's, has earned itself a reputation as a trendy destination for celebrity visitors. Even though we covered the mountainsides and checked in every bar and restaurant, we still couldn't find our very own celebrity. 
So instead, we enjoyed the scenery and the great local atmosphere this beautiful island has to offer. So there's uh, yacht racing on here for the next uh, six days. So we should see some action tomorrow. And their vessels are from all over the world. And they have a lot of... Uh... Sail, spare sail. Loads of spare sails, life rafts. If you guys don't need your sail, we might need some. <laughs> <laughs> we just made ourselves a, uh, a ham, bread, and some like deliciously creamy cheese sauce stuff. And we're here in St. Bart's and there's like millionaires everywhere. And it's not us, we're just eating cheap sandwiches on the beach. Homemade. All right, the plane has to land through the gap in the mountains. And then it has to dip down into the valley and land on this runway here. And stop before it hits the ocean at the other end. All right, this is the takeoff procedure. Super short runway, and he's up. And that's it, that's the ocean right there. If they don't make it, they're in the drink. So we pulled around the anchorage here and the, uh, the sailing yachts are racing straight past our back door. The helicopter's getting right in there and this big maxi boat is just cooking. Am I you look French to you before? Proud to be back in your homeland with your wine, your cheese, your baguettes. Since I tried the food, oh yeah. Oh yeah, the food is the food is unbelievable. You are my sunshine on a rainy day. You are the one who takes my breath away. In the last case of love, I'm free. With a small break in the weather, we thought it best to put the drone up in the air to get some more footage of our beautiful quiet anchorage. Then disaster struck, as our drone wouldn't return and we lost signal. The hunt was on and the battery alarm just started. <laughs> We saved the drone. More footage to come. Hope you enjoy and we will see you next week in Montserrat. Montserrat is still recovering from a dramatic eruption of the Sofre Hills volcano that caused an evacuation of the capital Plymouth. Not to mention a meat selling dinghy disaster. I'm done. For more exclusive episodes, head over to patreon.com and search Taking the Chance.